Hey guys, welcome to the next video. Today I have a couple of questions from matrices and determinants, linear algebra questions. So let's start with it. If P is a matrix, it's a 3 cross 3 matrix, uh, which is equal to 1, alpha, 3, 1, 3, 3, 2, 4, 4. This is the adjoint of a 3 cross 3 matrix A and the determinant of this matrix A is 4 then alpha is equal to so for this question you need to you will have to recall the properties of adjoint so guys p is adjoint a okay adjoint what is the adjoint matrix it is the yeah, it is the transpose of the cofactor matrix okay you need to know what is a cofactor matrix. Cofactors are basically the sign attached with the minor entries and hence you create the entire cofactor matrix because every entry has a minor entry associated to it. So P is a joint A and uh, we need to find out given that determinant of A is equal to 4, we need to find out alpha. Okay, so there is a relationship. There are few properties of adjoint that you should actually recall, and one of them we will be right now. We will be using. So, what are these properties of adjoint A? Number one, A multiplied by adjoint A is same as adjoint A multiplied by A, and that is equal to determinant the value determinant A multiplied by I, whatever order is the matrix A. I is also of the same order. Now, a joint of B A, product of B A is a joint B multiplied by a joint A. Of course, there's an assumption that B and A are of same order. Number three, something that we will be using up here is the fact that the adjoint, the determinant of a joint A, in case it's an order n matrix, it is determinant of A to the power n minus 1, where A is order n. Okay, this is something that I actually used in one of the previous questions as well. And there I did give you a proof of it as well. So number four, there's another property that you should always keep in mind is a joint of say k times k is a scalar a. The scalar comes out k, how many times? n minus one times and multiplied by a joint a. So these are the four properties of a joint that you should remember. Now we'll be using this third property to solve our question. So determinant, determinant of a joint A is equal to determinant of A to the power n minus one. In our case, determinant of a joint A will be equal to, what is the determinant of A? It's given to us four. 4 to the power 3 minus 1, that is 4 square, that is 16. Now, what is 16? The determinant of P, a joint A is basically P. So, determinant of P is 16. Find alpha. So, let's just find out determinant of this matrix. Let's just expand using the first row. So, if I expand using the first row, determinant of P is 1 multiplied by the determinant of 3, 3, 4, 4, and that's going to be just 0. 3 into 4, 12, 12 minus 12, 0. Minus alpha times the determinant 1 into 4, 4 minus 2 into 3, 6. So that is minus 2, right? Plus 3 times the determinant of 1, 3, 2, 4, that is 4, minus 6 again. So that is minus 2. So this gives me 2 alpha minus 6. So that means determinant of P is 2 alpha minus 6 and it is equal to 16. So clearly 
2 alpha is equal to 16 plus 6 that is 22 and hence alpha is equal to 11. So 11 will be the correct answer. Do we have an option? Yes, B is the correct option. So the property that we have used here is what is the determinant of a joint matrix? It is the determinant of original matrix to the power n minus 1 where n is the order of the matrices that we are working with. Now there's another question that I want to, I wish to work with you guys on and that is if A is 3 cross 3 matrix such that A square is equal to 0. So you multiply A by itself, it is 0. Then the number of non-zero eigenvalues of A is. Now, what do you mean by eigenvalues? Eigenvalues are your characteristic roots. What are characteristic roots? Characteristic roots satisfy the characteristic equation. And where is this characteristic equation coming from? It is coming from the fact Ax is equal to lambda x. When you take this matrix transformation, it turns out to be just a scalar transformation. Then this lambda is eigenvalue of A. If it's a 2 cross 2 matrix you're talking about, you will get 2 lambdas. If you it's a 3 cross 3, you will get 3 lambdas and so on and so forth. So depending on the order, you will get number of roots because lambda turns out to be number of roots of the characteristic equation. Characteristic equation is your A determinant of A minus lambda I equal to zero. When you open up this determinant, you will get an equation. If it's a two cross two matrix, you'll get quadratic. If it's three cross three, you'll get cubic and hence the number of roots. Okay. So now we will try to answer this question. How many eigen, non-zero eigenvalues will I have in case A square is equal to zero? I don't, we don't know A, but we know that A square is equal to zero. For this, you will have to know some concepts um, in deeper in linear algebra. So Ax equals to lambda x, right? Now, when this is happening, then we say that lambda is an eigenvalue of A corresponding to the vector x, corresponding to the vector x, okay? What happens is that in case ax is equal to lambda x, that is lambda is an eigenvalue of a corresponding to x, then what's going to happen is that if you take a power of k, a, so if you take for any positive integer, if you take a, take a to the power k, lambda to the power k will be an eigenvalue of a to the power k. Okay, so this will always happen. So in case eigenvalue of a is lambda corresponding to some particular x, this doesn't happen for all x and for all lambdas. For particular vector x, you know, you will be able to generate lambda. For the same x, if you take a to the power k, lambda to the power k will be uh, an eigenvalue for a to the power k. So what are we given? We are given that a square is equal to 0. a square is equal to 0. So given that, a square is equal to 0. Are we given order? Yes, we are given order. So it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So what would be the, what are the eigenvalues of A square? How do you calculate eigenvalues? So eigenvalues come from Ax equal to lambda x and what you can do is 
you can take everything to one side. So this is what you get. You want a non-zero solution, non-trivial solution. Because x equal to 0 always solves it. Okay, x equals to 0 always solves it. You will put x equal to 0, 0 will be equal to 0, left hand side equal to right hand side. Your equation is satisfied. So for a non-trivial solution, non-trivial means non-zero solution. That is, we will be looking for, it's a homogeneous system of equation. In homogeneous system of equation, one solution always exists, which is x equal to zero. That will be always a solution because that will give you left-hand side equals to right-hand side. So if you're looking for a non-trivial solution, that means what are you looking for? You are looking for infinitely many solutions because no solution is not possible only. क्यों नहीं हो सकता नो सॉल्यूशन नो सॉल्यूशन इसलिए नहीं हो सकता क्योंकि एक सॉल्यूशन तो हमेशा ही है x equal to zero is always a solution so infinitely many solutions is what you're looking at for infinitely many solutions to any system if you have a system say b x equals to zero for infinitely many solution the determinant has to be equal to zero. So that means the determinant here has to be zero. Determinant a minus lambda i has to be zero. Now, your a is actually this a square we are looking at. A square, we're looking at a square. Looking for eigenvalues of a square. So that means which is actually just a zero matrix. So that means determinant of this is my a square minus lambda i equals to zero is what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at the determinant of zero minus lambda, zero minus lambda, zero minus lambda. Rest everything is zero, of course. Determinant of this equals to zero. Determinant of this equals to zero, right? So if the determinant of this is equal to zero, what you can clearly get is that all the lambdas have to be equal to zero. Lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, all the lambdas are equal to zero. You have three lambdas and all of them will be equal to zero because it's a zero matrix. It's a zero matrix, so it has to be zero. So all the lambdas are equal to zero. All the lambdas are equal to zero. then only this determinant will be equal to zero. So all the lambdas are zero. If all eigenvalues of, so what just we got? We got that all eigenvalues of A square are zero. I just made you guys write down something. In case A to the power K has all zero eigenvalues automatically a will also have the same eigenvalues okay so a will have zero eigenvalue right so eigenvalues of a eigenvalues of a eigenvalues of a are all zero. So eigenvalue of A are also all zero. That means how many non-zero eigenvalues of A do we have? Zero. Because we only have zero as our eigenvalues. So non-zero So that means A is the correct option. Okay. This is a little difficult one in the sense that you need to know a little extra uh, in terms of about eigenvalues, but character roots, character, characteristic roots, characteristic polynomial, char characteristic equation is something that uh, you must have done. I, I, I think you should revise at this junction. Thank you so much.